A growing number of pastors in America have thought seriously about leaving the ministry. And that's especially true post-COVID. Studies from the Hartford Institute for Religion Research show that since 2020, over 40 percent of pastors say they've seriously considered leaving their congregations at least once, and over half have had doubts of remaining in ministry altogether. What's the cause of this sad reality, and what can we do as those who sit in the pews and, and care for those who watch over us spiritually? Joining me is Pastor Bill Bradford. He was involved as a church planter in Peru for 10 years and for the past 14 or so years has been senior pastor at the Lawndale Presbyterian Church in Tupelo. He's here to give us some insight on this. Hi, Bill. Welcome. Hey, Jeff. Glad to be here. When you look at numbers like 40% uh, considering leaving their churches, those are very high numbers. Does this surprise you? Yes, uh, somewhat. I most pastors I visit with, they're not actually considering leaving. Mm -hmm. They are oftentimes going through hard things. Uh, However, I I don't doubt the statistics. I think some of the statistics about pastoral burnout have been a little bit high Mm -hmm. about numbers that were leaving on a monthly basis, Mm -hmm. but I have no doubt that people, pastors are dealing with a lot of pressure and they feel very worn out and are lacking support and need refreshment. In my circles, I think a lot of it would have to do with not taking care of yourself. Mm, okay. Overworking and thinking you have to overwork or not realizing that you are overworking, not guarding a day off. Okay. And that has repercussions on your, you know, personal spiritual life, your sense of well being as well as your family. And so, you know, having Developing friendships and having solid friendships that you can really share with. One of the things we're trying to promote Mm -hmm. is pastoral cohorts. Uh, Sometimes it's really complicated to be completely vulnerable and transparent in your own congregations. And pastors are dealing with similar things. And so we, we try to meet every four to six weeks and spend an extended time together. Uh, One to share and pray for each other, but also, we, we actually work through things like self-care and spiritual formation and marriage and family and uh, leadership issues. So all that comes into play. There's just a whole lot one could say about that theme, yeah, that, expectations in the congregation. Yeah, a lot of different reasons. It mm-hmm. seems that you, know, you have the spiritual category of, of mm-hmm. the, the fact that you need to be nurtured yourself as a shepherd. And then there are just the plain old physical characteristics of fatigue, emotions, and, and anxiety, depression, all of those things that will, would creep in as well. What have you done as a pastor to guard your own soul and your life against uh, burnout and fatigue? Yeah, so, I mean, you know, I have to confess that I I haven't often done the best job and have run on empty at periods of time in my pastoral life and missionary life prior to that. And it's always a struggle for me, as I mentioned, to discipline myself to take a full day off, one that my family could count on. I think that's very important, and I Mm -hmm. wish I had been better at it through the years. Uh, I do try to guard time to pray and read the Bible devotionally, and that is a struggle. Yeah, I, I, I easily blur that into sermon preparation or some other preparation. Uh, I try to do something physical. I need, I need to work out, and uh, I feel a lot better if I am active, so I try to do that several times a week. And once again, as I mentioned a moment ago, trying to do better cultivating my friendships outside the church, yeah. and particularly in this pastoral cohort I'm involved with. Um, I, I'm involved in a lot of men's groups, too, within our church, and I, I do feel like our climate in my local church is is pretty healthy, and, and we can share. Okay. So, you know, sometimes it gets tiring, but at the same time, I always feel built up. And so, and just having yeah. strengthened friendships within the church is important. And then just working on my marriage too, and uh, that's you know that's something that constantly you know as we all know it's yeah. something that needs constant attention. Sometimes with the various strains and uh, responsibilities pulling us in various directions, I, I feel like um, 
increased attention needs to be placed on our sense of connection between each other. So we work on that a good bit as well. Do you um, think that the people in your church are aware of those needs? I do. And, you know, we feel supported by our local church. Um, mm-hmm. We get words of affirmation. Um, our leaders reach out and encourage us in various ways. Uh, so we've been very thankful. I, I do think they are aware that there are responsibilities in the church that are pulling on us for a lot of the week. And mm-hmm. church work is, is a little bit odd in that you can really work all the time. And you don't want to call it work because it really is your community. Sure, yeah. But there is an element in which you're, you're kind of on all the time as well. And I think they are aware of that, you know, constant, I don't know if you call it pressure or just, you know, ministry consideration. You were interviewed in an article for this month's Stan Magazine on uh, pastoral burnout, and you made reference to some structural safeguards that churches can put in place in terms of sharing leadership. A lot of churches, a lot of pastors may be listening. They're the only staff member in their churches. When you do have deacons and others, would you speak to the issue of sharing some of those leadership responsibilities and how that relieves some of that pressure? Yeah, it it can certainly all fall back on the pastor, especially if you're a solo pastor. you got to wear a lot of hats and you went into the church thinking it'd be one thing, and then you realize that a lot that you studied, you're doing other things, and they're not particularly in your wheelhouse. Mm-hmm. So that seventy thirty, you know, mm-hmm. between what you really feel fulfilled in and what ends up draining you, you end up crossing that line, and you're doing like sixty percent of the things that drain you. And then, you know, speaking personally, sometimes I'm just not a good delegator, and I end up just letting myself do more than I ought to. So I think learning to delegate and plan ahead to do that is real important and realizing that you don't really have to teach on all the occasions in which there's a church gathering. And in fact, it's good for the congregation for you not to. Mm -hmm. And it's good for your leadership to step up and exercise their gifts. Uh, Those sorts of things. Also incorporating others, realizing that I didn't have to do all the visitation and then dividing up the congregation into some sort of care groups, mm-hmm. little small groups that are overseen by some leader, that that leader can be the point person to see how everybody is doing, if anybody's falling through the cracks, and report back to you. I think that's very important. We've In my church, uh, we've gone up and down on that, and I think we're doing a little bit better right now, and it's been just extraordinarily helpful that I'll have leaders call me up and say, did you hear about so-and-so? And that helps me because I might not have heard, and even if I had heard, it just encourages me yeah. to know they know about it too. Sure. And so those sorts of things have been very helpful. Um, then just structural things are really helpful, you know, and um, having an employee handbook is very good to have things clear about time off, days off, how, what's expected of employees and – all that. Uh, we didn't have that for, for years. It was kind of understood, but we didn't have it all written out. But now having it written out, there is a sense of peace about the regular functioning policies and procedures that I didn't realize I was going to appreciate as much as I do. Yeah, yeah. I guess it's easier to overlook what's not written. Well, that's right. You know, and that's and, right. Uh, yeah, that's good. Uh, from a pastor, last question, Bill. What are some of the most supportive gestures that you've been shown by your congregation that really have just charged you up and said, you know, I can rest here and I, I feel rejuvenated because of what I've received? Yeah, for me, it tends to be the the more mundane things that really to me aren't, like just having a, a phone call to tell you something they appreciated or some way they're praying for me mm-hmm. or a unique way in which they took care of my wife or my children. You know, I've had some of the men in the, in the church that have actually had meetings with my children to talk about some you know, financial planning or something like that okay. that just meant the world to me. Um, of course, the sabbatical that we, we instituted as a church. That was a huge blessing to us. They gave us a six-week sabbatical. It was just wonderful. We got to do things that we otherwise would not have done, yeah. both for my extended family and for my personal rest. And 
other kinds of reading and and more extended time of prayer where I wasn't <laughs> didn't have the distraction of preparing, but I actually got to pray through the mm-hmm. church, which did a lot for my soul to, to to have that more extended time. So that was a huge blessing when the church instituted, you know, every six years to give us a six week sabbatical. A lot that we can do to show appreciation for our pastors. Bill Bradford, pastor of Lawndale Presbyterian Church here in Tupelo, Mississippi. Thanks for being with us and sharing your thoughts. Thank you, Jeff.